Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midway break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world and open source and just Linux, anything that we find interesting. Speaking of that, I'm Vince Stone. That's Joe Bryant. Hopefully you find hello, it hello. just like a little bit interesting. But if you don't, that's all right. You'll find everyone watching this live quite interesting, quite entertaining. They've been having a good time in chat trying to help me, old man Vin. <laughs> Find where my wish list was on Steam as yeah. I puttered around. <laughs> I've got hundreds of games online, as Ben knows. <laughs> you do, Jill. That's why I never buy you anything off your wish list because I have no <laughs> idea what you want. Jill just sees the game and adds it and adds it and adds it. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> but oh. we got a fun show for you today. We're going to be talking about Solus, the new Thunderbird refresh, open RGB updates and hardware acceleration for MPV. But first, Jill, you've decided that you love Facebook. Oh, yeah. So I installed Mark Zuckerberg's Threads app and have been using it. And honestly, I am quite impressed. I installed it Thursday morning, but I've just recently read it has over 100 million downloads. <laughs> that's, that's pretty insane. And yes, it is a lot like Twitter, but still, it's still not complete yet, but honestly has so much potential. And it was, it was nice that, you know, I thought it was really nice that it brought my profile and followers in from Instagram. Uh, that was a nice touch. So I didn't have to go and make a new profile and, and add followers. That, that was really smart and really convenient. And what is interesting then is when I was installing it on Android, I noticed it said that future versions of threads will have a Fediverse component. Interesting. <laughs> that would be cool. Uh, if Meta could make the Fediverse easily discoverable, I'm all for it. So, um, and everyone wanted a competitor to Twitter, but I actually never thought about a Meta or Facebook based one. <laughs> it, it is kind of funny, but it's very well done. It has the, the feed system is a lot like Twitter, but the um, layout and design is very Instagram still. So it's, it's kind of the best of both worlds. But there's lots of people on there talking, including a lot of people from the Linux community. So I've been having really fun interacting with people. That's cool. I mean, yeah. you know, you don't have to worry like too much. Like no real Linux user would use a Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, there's irony in that, Ven, because a lot of Linux users are on Facebook. <laughs> and one of the reasons is, is Jill, because... Jill, I said real Linux users. <laughs> uh, no, uh, Mad Dog <laughs> is on, uh, on uh, Facebook. And... I didn't say old Linux users. I said real ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> at the end of well, the day you get to use what you want one of the fascinating yeah. things that i've seen about the threads and the federated ability is everyone saying we've got to make sure we block that we gotta make, we're not gonna allow that into our instance and it's bad <laughs> like come on people see if you can get it figured <laughs> out um it is interesting to see people running away from twitter to threads and like really let's try to like Maybe come back over to Mastodon. We do get some good news to share about Mastodon, though. Um, this month. This month. You know, how many mm -hmm. days we, are we into uh, July? 11? 10? 12? 12? We're already yes, back up to... Yes, it is the 12th. Um, <laughs> and a check. <laughs> we're over 2 million active users on Mastodon again. Woohoo! Nice That's big exciting. jump yeah. right at the beginning of the month. Love to see that. Uh, threads is a thing. It didn't get released in the EU. That's where I was like, that's usually a bad sign. Um, we'll see how it works. I want to say big disclaimer, big warning on that though. Currently, right now, if you sign up for Threads, it like becomes a symbiote to your Instagram account. So you can't get rid of your Threads account. If you try to close out your Threads account, you can mute it. But if you close it, there goes your Instagram account. Then again, yeah. I technically have an Instagram account, which I'm reminded of. Like, I think a lot of people, when I click on an Instagram <laughs> link and it's like, hey, you have an Instagram account. I'm like, I Log do. In. Huh. <laughs> Fascinating. So what have I been up to this week? Well, mm -hmm. it's the beginning of the show. So our favorite soap opera 
for the past couple of weeks is uh, what's going on at Red Hat and watching the reactions to Red Hat going, hey man, we're going to make sure RHEL is uh, available to our customers and we're just not going to give it out wide open like we've been doing for a long time. Unsurprisingly, the internet had some weird reactions to that, which rightfully so. Rightfully so. Mm-hmm. One company, and I, I mentioned this, I don't know, the day it happened was, this is, this is clearly a shot aimed at Oracle. You know, mm-hmm. other companies profiting off of the work that Red Hat was doing. I was like, no, Ben, this is going after Rocky. and This is going after Alma. To my mm-hmm. point, here's Oracle using the words, keep Linux open and free. <laughs> irony the dis- <laughs> deliciousness yes. of reading through this of oracle being part of the linux community for 25 years and you know we're just we're, we're here to help you guys and i don't know i don't know jill did this like knock you back a little bit when you read this yeah absolutely <laughs> the irony <laughs> As for Oracle, we will continue pursuing our goal as Linux as transparently and openly as possible while minimizing fragmentation. We will continue to develop our test software product products on Oracle. Oracle will continue to be rel compatible to the extent we can make. Poor little Oracle. Uh, they, they love Linux and they're so open and like. <laughs> Mir and chat had a good point. Hello, Open Solaris. Open Solaris, are you okay? Open Solaris. <laughs> just just seeing Oracle talk about like openness just yeah. makes me roll my <laughs> You know, Oracle, you killed Sun. <laughs> you yeah, you did. And that's that's why a lot of Linux users are upset. <laughs> and a lot of people Let me tell you the reason history. I am upset. I mine goes a little <laughs> deeper than that, Joe Bryant. Yeah. It's not that you killed Sun. It's why you killed Sun. It's the reason you bought Sun in the first place. To go after Google. You wanted those Android patents. Yeah. Also, you tried to patent an API. Like, don't don't mm-hmm. talk to me about openness, Oracle. Like, this is the most transparent. Like, you probably <laughs> just, you know, you have that friend that shows up. Like, you need to, I, I, I understand you want to be part of the group and, like, get in on this. Take shots at the king. But maybe you just need to get back over there, Oracle. However, <laughs> however, Oracle's not the only one. Susie. Yeah. Susie is like, we want some of this too. We're, we're going to do a hard fork of RHEL. Now, this is from Dirk Peter Van mm-hmm. Leeuwen. And you might know him because he spent 16 years at Red Hat. You know, he's a, he was a high up for a long time. Now he's running the Susie, and you know what? Let's not pretend for one second that Susie doesn't know a thing or two about vendor lock-in. Mm-hmm. So while not uh, deliciously ironic as the Oracle announcement, this is still kind of sweet. Now, yes. I think we've talked about Susie Liberty Linux that they rolled out uh, a little while back. Yeah, we did. So, um, yeah, they're going to do, I met him as well, it's not Oracle that's going to be forking rel, it's Susie. They're going to be doing a hard fork. They're going to invest $10 million in it. And we're, we're just going to see what happens. And hopefully this is going to be the last edition of our Red Hat Soap Opera drama. Yeah, <laughs> the saga continues. It can, just, it can just be over with. I'm like, well, yeah. let's settle down. Because during this whole time, I'm like, man, <laughs> just use Debian. Come mm-hmm. on. I mean, come on, come on, come on. I, I mean, I might be a bit biased. Yeah. Just a bit. <laughs> but I, I, I came to Debian after using everything else and getting down to like, hey, I really like how this works. And there's a reason so many other distributions are based on Debian. Yeah. Uh, Susie's an interesting fit forking that because, you know, it's RPM based distribution. Here's what we need to do we need to bring back Mandrake. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> How about we do that? Mandrava, Mandrake. <laughs> alien. We can use the Alien RPM yeah. package converter from way back in the day, which I managed to get to work once, and that filled me with false hope in like the early 2000s because I'm never going to get it to work on anything else correctly again. Mm-hmm. So, 
We got Oracle talking about openness. We got Susie hard forking Rel and dropping 10 mil on that. Let's talk about another distribution that's not one of the red, yes. red ad based. Come <laughs> this on. This is exciting. Yes. <laughs> so, guess what? Distro has a new release. After almost two years. You said Gus, give me a minute. I mean, wait a second. I got to think. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Guess which one, Ben? <laughs> Solaris. Yeah. <laughs> that would be cool. Even open Solaris, <laughs> I'd be happy with as well. <laughs> So almost two years, Joshua Strobel announced the long-awaited Solus 4.4 ISO release of this awesomely independent rolling release Linux distribution featuring the Budgie, KDE, Plasma, GNOME, and Mate desktops. And this version of Solus 4.4 is called Harmony. It's the Harmony release and is powered by Linux kernel 6.3 and now supports secure boot. Intel Arc GPUs, NVIDIA 40 Series GPUs, AMD Radeon RX 7600, 7900 XT, and 7900 XTX cards. Also has enhanced support for various light sensors and accelerometers, and a lot more. Too, too much to mention. This is a huge release. The flagship edition of Solus 4.4 is using the latest Budgie 10.7 desktop environment. So, it, which is no surprise because the lead developer of the Budgie desktop is Joshua Strobel, <laughs> who released this version of Solus. <laughs> and of course, but uh, the Budgie desktop came from Solus. So that this is its, its birth pet place. So it makes sense. And um, I actually- I know somebody who's gonna be like, come on, man, really? <laughs> what are you doing to mate? Oh Plan yeah, yeah. They're they are planning to be deprecate the Mate desktop um and in going to and they're going to release an XFCE desktop instead because of the Wayland support uh not being active on the Mate desktop, but more active on the XF XFCE desktop. So that's a thing then. Thank and <laughs> We, we were talking about this in the pre-show. If you're a patron, go back and listen to that just like a little bit. My, my, my only hot take about that is um, I'm a borderline XFCE zealot when it comes to like you, when you need a desktop just to get work done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've also commented on I probably won't be running Wayland for a long, long time securely because mm -hmm. uh, XFCE has got to get on Wayland in. And it, it's, we're, we're probably like minimum like yeah. two years out Two from years that. away. Yeah. That makes sense. I'm I'm hoping all the X window managers are are going to come within two years as well, including my beloved window maker. But uh, one of the things I did with Solus Budgie is, of course, I downloaded it and installed it, and I was very impressed with how fast the installation is and how well designed and easy to navigate the installer is. And this version seems to be even faster. I was always impressed with the speed, uh, you know, several years ago, and they have improved it since then. It's really, really nice and very easy to navigate. And also, uh, when you boot the desktop, I like that they went with, for a more traditional Windows looking like layout for Budgie with the application menu at the bottom left of the screen and the bottom panel. And this, of course, can be changed, but I thought that was a nice touch, especially for New Year's Year's to Linux coming from Windows. And there what is the actually... Windows 11 shouldn't have been like in the middle or something. <laughs> yeah, well, you can do that, too. <laughs> you can do that, too. But I know so many people that are still on old versions of Windows. <laughs> and uh, there is actually dual GPU support in the Budgie menu now. And there's nice notification sounds. I was surprised when I hear, heard the notification sounds. A new Budgie screenshot app and a new power dial dialogue for session management. And one of my favorite things about Solus and one of Solus's key features is the enhancements using Steam and playing games, despite it building being a built from scratch distro. Uh, all the necessary dependencies get installed as well as a nice Linux Steam integration app where you can configure to force 32-bit mode for Steam or switch between the native runtime or the bundled Steam runtime and many other settings. 
So they they really, you know, when Solus, remember when Solus came out then, they were really emphasizing their support for Steam and games. And they've done that. In fact, uh, Pedro, who used to be here on the show, used to run uh, Solus. He, he did for quite a few years. Yeah, then he ditched it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that was that was when there was you know they stopped doing support on it. <laughs> so, no, it's because they wouldn't make some very obvious changes. That they oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. He Two had them. contacted them and they didn't Filed change some reports. things and yeah. yeah, the bug reports. Yeah, that's right. Forgot about that. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> he reminded so, yeah. me of it last week. Um, yeah, this um, is no, LTC this is, Weekly. <laughs> I mean, I'm. I don't know. I mean, I'm glad it's out there. I, it'd be interesting to see, you know, if Solus is, can come back to like some popularity. Yeah. That's for a minute there. And it, had a, it, it had a bunch of goodwill and like a bunch of people were interested and they were playing around with it. And then it just, poof, just disappeared. Like, yeah. So good work, everybody on the Solus team. Keep it up. Uh-huh. Have a great distribution. Awesome and uh, good choice on XFC because I'm completely unbiased. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Joshua. Uh, this is a wonderful release. <laughs> Thunderbird. That's right. The drink of champions, the car of the questionables. <laughs> Supernova release. Look yeah. at it. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of uh, uh, gooey panels there, Ven. <laughs> that looks like regular Thunderbird, though. No, it does, actually. They did a good job, I think. Nobody has a problem with that, because that's not what it looks like anymore, Jill. No, I know that's the old one. <laughs> I forget, because I'm still running an older version. <laughs> Prepare yourselves, a video watchers. Here it comes. Here's the big <laughs> there reveal. There it is. There's the new one. Yeah. Da, da, da. Meet Supernova, Fancy, our latest, <laughs> fastest, most beautiful Thunderbird yet. That is designed to maximize your freedoms. That's what I look for in my email client. Freedom <laughs> maximization. It's here. You can play around with it. A bunch of things to play around. And you might remember, if you've been listening to this show, I said months and months and months and months and months ago. I did. I said, there's going to be an upcoming <laughs> UI change that is going to yeah. blow you away for good or for ill. And here it is. Beautiful iconography. Easy density controls. Intuitive app menus? Mm, how much would you pay? Nothing, because it's open mm. source. That's right. New and sortable folder modes, eye-catching tag. Oh, man, nothing wrong with some sexy tags. Modernized card view. Improved address book. Expanded accessibility. Good to see. Improved calendar design. All of this is there, and there's more to come. There's more to come. Yeah. Plenty of new goodies to run out and go play with if you're a fan of Thunderbird. And I looked around. There still doesn't really seem to be an option for threaded emails. No, mm-hmm. that view would be kind of interesting. And I do see that the search bar is like front and center in this, right? Yeah. And we look at that and like, uh, here it is. It's right up there at the top. I do have the one question here. Have you improved search? Uh, what well, that yes. connects to, because if you, anybody who's ever had to search for uh, large databases across multiple email accounts with Thunderbird, that can be a bit of a chore. So hopefully some work is planned or has been done on the back end of that search bar that is quite front and center to clean some of that up um it looks functional ish like i don't immediately um you know my first instinct is like it looks like a web-based email client you know if somebody had showed me that and they'd filed off the thunderbird is like is that electron (laughs) you know for good or for bad but then again let's be perfectly clear i don't think the old thunderbird uh looked Dated? Yeah. I don't. It was functional. <laughs> That's what it says in the show notes. Um, it does look absolutely functional because I, I use email for work. I don't use email for anything. I don't use calendars or tags. And like I, I got my own system that has been working with this Outlook ish type mm-hmm. setup for the history of Thunderbird. Now, <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. Uh, I've moved to Claws. I, I made that move months and months ago because I'm like, I, I just need an email client. I don't need calendars or anything else. So, you know, I, I need email. Yeah, just email. Yeah. I tried Evolution. Like, 
everything's got like some weird stuff going on. Still keep Thunderbird around. Always pop in like, hey, what's going on with this? And I'm going to do the same for this. But yeah, if you're just looking for like straight up, just old school email, go check out Claws. People don't talk about that. Now, they didn't exactly get everything in their roadmap. Something that I saw, um, you know, they keep a roadmap over at developer.thunderbird.net. I was like, didn't they have some other ideas? Because, you know, they posted on the roadmap, like maybe some extra things we're planning on adding. And so often it's the case, you know, a lot of stuff from the initial proposal doesn't make it into the first version of the product. They're still working on it. It's coming down the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they went back and deleted it from their roadmap. <laughs> that, that's what I found when I checked two days ago. You did? Yeah. Because I put <laughs> it in the notes. Now, <laughs> if you go back to webarchive.org, you can see some of the other stuff that, what it originally looked like. Uh, Firefox Sync, and, you know, they got the Unified to Toolbar, the App Menu, Thing I, I like an idea of like maybe they're still planning, maybe they're still working on a lot of this stuff, and they got conversational views and things like this. And don't go back and remove this stuff, you know. Don't don't stress and affect these things. These are good to know people are working on, you know. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm going to be saying about that. Um, for me, desktop, email, on Linux, Windows, Mac, whatever. It's not necessarily a growth market. Like, it's always going to have a set amount of people, and most people use web-based email. Yeah. To true. which, you know, the closer you get to, like, web-based email, I'm like, why don't you just use web-based email? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like so. Thunderbird. Yeah. I've been a fan of Thunderbird. They're, they're making moves in the right direction. I'm going to install this. And the one thing, if they get this right... Because I've been like, please fix this. Not for me, but for other users for at least six or seven years. Is high DPI support, making that work oh, correctly. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's been a problem. It requires going in and editing a config. Which I don't like. I like that's a bad experience, especially on, you know, on Linux. Like, maybe that's sorted now. Maybe that's sorted now. And it scales appropriately, especially if you have a high DPI display. Or 4K, 20, you know, consumer, not 4K, but consumer 4K, 2160p. That also happens to be, I don't know, 40 inches. So you're not running, you know, 1.2 yeah. or 2x scaling, which and if you're familiar with the Steam client, which is laughable when it turns into like big jumbo Tonka mode. Because <laughs> I it, know. <laughs> it, it assumes like you're on a 4K laptop, point. right? Like 13 yeah, inches. It's like, point. no, I'm yeah. on a 42, 43 <laughs> inch monitor here. It looks silly. I want my desktop real estate back. That might be a hard nut to crack. Joe, you got some thoughts on it too, though. Yeah. Well, you know, in the last release, they did do a lot of improvements with the, uh, you know, the uh, scaling, especially with the fonts. So that that was a thing. And um, I actually, I'm kind of looking forward to playing with this new version. E every time there's a new version, I do, you know, install it. Like the, the last major release, um, I have installed on several systems and like it. And um, with this coming release, I actually like the organization for the sortable folders modes that's available in the folder pa pane. So this allows you to easily move folders up and down or turn them off to hide them or on to show them. And I actually find myself doing this quite a bit in Gmail because I so have so many categories of emails, like literally like 50 different categories of emails. Although Gmail actually calls the collections labels instead of folders, but it's essentially, you know, uh, the almost the same thing. So, um, and the Gmail one is also on the left-hand panel. And, but I think it's cool that they added uh, the tags view in the folder pane. Um, that's uh, nice and handy. Um, I actually need to start utilizing tags more in Thunderbird. So I think that's a nice feature. So I'm looking forward to it, all the changes. They got a big job ahead of them. You know, they're dealing with a 20 plus year old code base yeah, that they're rewriting. So that's right. Be easy on them. You know, this yeah. is not a consumer product. They're doing what they can with the resources that are available. If you use Thunderbird, try it out. Send in some feedback. Let them know what you think. And that's good. That's mm -hmm. good. Who knows? I'm, I'm going to try this out. Also, be very careful when you like jump into Thunderbird betas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
You need to be very <laughs> careful when you jump the betas, because, or at least duplicate your mail folder. Call it like Thunderbird 2, because sometimes it will update things to when you try to switch back. It goes, nope, this nope. is no longer compatible. <laughs> be careful. That's personal experience. Now, open RGBs. Got a new version out, and you know what? Yeah. My favorite thing about OpenRGB, because when you go to their GitLab instance, they got screenshots. And if yeah. I'm going to give people, <laughs> sure do. if I'm giving you a hard time for not having screenshots, I'm going to remind you that you're doing a great job by putting them on your page. Yeah, absolutely. So yes, OpenRGB 0.9 is out and has lots of awesome software updates and supported hardware to make all your devices on Linux enjoy rainbow vomit i can tell which you exactly what i'm gonna do like <laughs> if i had this open let's let's just say i'm looking at this and this is like insane right it's got a couple of sticks of ram it's got the motherboard <laughs> a gpu a couple of fans a keyboard though two keyboards and maybe a mouse and fireflies whatever you know, this stuff is i'm gonna log in I'm, I'm gonna spin this little circle here on the right a couple of times and make it have a couple of seizures and then i'll never touch it again there you go oh, okay <laughs> Whereas I actually use this, I have it installed on on uh, my uh, Pop OS H HP Omen rig, and Open RGB works with the HP Omen uh, settings from HP. So and uh, all the color settings, and that makes me happy. <laughs> so something new that has come to Open RGB is segment control. So segments. Support allows you to split up address addressable LED zones into multiple segments that can be handled independently. And this actually fine grain control is something that has been missing from open R RGB, but has been available on the Windows proprietary RGB apps for quite some time. So I'm happy to, to have this feature and have more control over our rainbow vomit and unicorn vomit colors. <laughs> And this is this is also useful to divide up daisy changed ARGB devices like fans and strips connected to the same header. So very convenient. And thank you so much, OpenRGB. A lot of us have been waiting for this feature. And there's a new keyboard layout manager that uh, Ven showed on the screen. That's very colorful <laughs> and pretty. And you can you know set up your keyboard to each key on the keyboard to do different colors. And there's support for the JSOX Steam Deck dock, which now has RGB. So they, they did that really quickly. Awesome to support uh, Linux devices there. Open RGB. They did the support very quickly. <laughs> and uh, one of the most important, uh, <laughs> Kai's got an excellent, excellent point. That was, that should have been the end of my sentence. Uh, Open RGB has helped Kai. Cut it all <laughs> turn, off. Turn off all the rainbow vomit. Aww. Which is, you know, the software solution to me cutting LEDs. Yeah, <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Very good, Kai. Kai Linux. Very good. And yeah, I actually, I am very happy that it supports the JSOC Steam Deck dock. <laughs> it's really cool because that just came out, the RGB one. So there's a uh, new RGB support for additional GPUs, which were added to existing GPU controllers, such as for ASUS, EVGA, Gigabyte, MSI, NVIDIA, Palette, and PNY. And it now has Cherry Keyboard support, among many other hundreds oh, of hardware support out there. So Dude. go check the show notes. So you can make noise while you blink? Yes, you can. Awesome. <laughs> yes, you can, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I can I could do it right here, but I don't want to uh, <laughs> too much during the show. But <laughs> with my keyboard, my uh, uh, mine is of course uh, has its pink LEDs turned on. <laughs> no LEDs are on this. None. Yes, not even power. <laughs> Yes, very, Ven likes the minimal keyboard. <laughs> oh, I like the silent ergonomic keyboard. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't even use, uh, you know, the 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 fancy uh, <laughs> new keyboards at all. <laughs> no mechanical for Ven. <laughs> no, there's no advantage to a mechanical keyboard other than you like the sound of noise. Well, I I like the feel of them because of the old IBM, you know, keyboard days. <laughs> so. 
Yeah, it's all about likes and feels. Like, there's no. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I just like it. Clack, 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 clack. And you know what? That's cool. <laughs> That's fine. However, <laughs> you know what? I, I'm glad this project exists. Uh, if I had any, like, particularly shouty, what is it? Uh, mm -hmm. What are the control? MSI. What are the two different types? For uh, there, uh, I got like two different types. Uh, I thought one was like L something. Anyway, I got two different types. This Threadripper motherboard supports two different types of RGBs. Oh, ARGB or and, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> like the different yeah, there's standards. two different uh, protocols. Yes. Something that is really, really great about the open source community and this project particularly is the nightmare of having six different applications to control all of your Blinkatron 9000s in your room, in your house. In your neighbor's house because you didn't tell them, but mm -hmm. you know that's how you roll. <laughs> I don't judge you. Uh, applications like this and get everything under one hood. I like it. Yeah, it's it's awesome, you know. And that's the problem a lot of Windows users, you know, complain about is all the different separate pieces of software, which quite frankly aren't usually very good for all the different, you know. Uh, RGB keyboards and mice and well, a lot of them are and motherboards. You know, good in the sense that they function with the product, which yeah, is something that we're we're, we're getting there. Yeah, we're getting there. Like, don't over <laughs> don't oversell stuff, kids. You do more damage by like pretending like no, this this open source application is perfect. Everything works great. Then the person goes and downloads and uses it, and everything doesn't work great. Yeah, and that leaves them with a bad bad yeah, taste bad. for your yeah. open source project. So cheerleading is very damaging. Oh, keep but this that is in a, mind. a nice unified software for RGB, which is this has made incredible progress. Yeah, and they're just adding, as Joe was talking about, stacks and stacks of new hardware. Mm -hmm. So where can we download it? You can go to their GitLab page. What's a GitLab? <laughs> it's like a it's an alternative to GitHub uh, for developers to put their software on. So th those of us can download it and try it. There'll be a link in the show notes. This is available. <laughs> no, we're talking to you. Listen to the live show. There's Windows binaries, 64 and 32 bit. Mm -hmm. 32 and just is awesome. regular. It comes as an app image. So you don't have to worry about installing anything. If you're new to Linux and your skill sets, double clicking on things very good, goodly. There's an app yeah. image. Download there it. Double click is. on it with extreme <laughs> skill. It'll open right up. <laughs> There's <laughs> Linux binaries in Debian format, you know, that's real Debian, you know, they're available for Buster, Bullseye, and Bookworm. Mm -hmm. However, there, there's, there's some Fedora. notes if you're on 2004 for yeah. Bullseye and uh, 2104 if you're doing the Ubuntu's. And of course, don't forget for your app images, not needed for your Debian package, your UDEV mm -hmm. rules. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I really want to point this out. Available for Mac OS, Intel, and ARM. Yeah. For yeah, those of you who want blinking Macs. Yeah. <laughs> I think Mac users have better tastes than that. No. <laughs> oh, they, they, they buy the classic uh, PC mechanical RGB keyboards, too. <laughs> mechanical mice. keyboards. And headphones. <laughs> um, good work, everybody. Glad yeah. to see. It's awesome. All right. So I like running into unique problems. And if I run into a very unique problem, something that caused me to go, ha, huh, we usually get a guide out of it. This is no exception. Because no matter what video player you use, you probably don't even think about hardware acceleration. It's just one of those things. You're like, yeah, it's probably on. <laughs> Not going to notice it. And there's a good reason why. Modern CPUs. You got the grunt, like even low end modern CPU, it's going to be able to chew through 4K content. It's no big deal. It's not going to drop frames. It's not going to stutter mm -hmm. around. So I never noticed it. You know, last decade, whatever, never, never even thought about it. It's kind of assumed it was on. Everything just worked great. Then I needed to play 4K video on a vintage i5 3470, 10, 11, 12 year old CPU. And you know what? It could do it, surprisingly. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, look at you. You're playing 4K60 video. That, that's good. <laughs> nice. But then the fans went into turbo mode because it was struggling. <laughs> it was at 50% load across those four physical cores. It was like, why are you doing this to me, man? Um, did a little bit of investigation after that. And I found out that uh, 
my video player of choice, MPV. And this also goes for VLC, too. Mm -hmm. Neither of them ship with the GPU hardware acceleration and enabled. I'm like, but then uh, you get a GPU, and I was like, well, you know, the Intel integrated GPU, whatever it's called these days, you know, and the APU portion of it. Same goes for the Ryzen 5600G. Now, this is big. This works on NVIDIA, too. There's a guide over at LinuxGameCast.com. Everything's in the show notes. All you got to do is add this one line. After you get the right drivers installed, mind you, for AMD, Gen 8, newer Intel, or vintage Intel hardware, or NVIDIA, you just need to put hardware deck equals auto. You got to create a file if it's not already there. Save it. And here's the big thing. Let me open this image up in a larger tab. What we're seeing on the screen, the top one, this is the 5600G that Jill's on right now. Mm -hmm. So if I'm running on the CPU, we are going to be using, can I zoom in and enhance and cheat with us? Let, let me see. Uh, doop, doop, doop. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Can I get down here? Uh, uh, 4.3. You can almost see it. Uh, where do we have our cam hole? Boop. Hey, look at that. So we're at 42 degrees C, 7% load. And again, we're playing 4K60 content. And when we switch that over, and we're like, hey, man, use a little APU that's sitting right there. It's like, okay. Same amount of time in the video, too. I'm not, I'm not messing around with numbers here. 28C, 2%. Nice. So what you got to think about? If you're adding that one little line, it's going to drop your CPU usage. Now, this is just for the, you know, a modern-ish, you know, you consider 5600G reasonably modern. But when you do this on the Intel system, you're going from, oh, I don't know, what was it, 30%, 36% load, mm -hmm. and all the way down to like two to three. Yeah, it's amazing. You got to do this. Like, you got to do this. Why should you do it? You don't care. You got the latest and greatest. You got a, a brand new whatever, insert current year here, CPU. Power and heat. Power and heat. It requires more power. When it's doing everything on the CPU, it's going to generate more heat. What is it? Yeah. Generating more heat generates more noise. Yeah, generates more noise and hardware throttling. <laughs> That's CPU's thing. having to work a lot harder. Yeah. <laughs> you're making, even though you're like, man, I got like 24 cores. I was like, yeah, but you're still chewing up a lot of juice and you're still increasing the heat. And it's the summertime. You want to cut that down. But I'm also thinking about your home theater PCs. You know, a situation where you're going to be using not the latest and greatest hardware. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're using MPV, maybe you're using VLC or something of the like. This is where you need to make sure it's enabled because it's not enabled by default. I saw somebody, we get these comments. So if you post a comment on YouTube, right, then you go, oopsie, and you delete it. It still shows up in notifications, by the way. I don't put names next, you know, I was like, oh, maybe you misspoke. Somebody, somebody had written in uh, when I posted the video yesterday. They said, I, you know, this is enabled by default in Ubuntu, which I was like, I don't know if it is or not. Apparently it's not because they went back and deleted that comment. Yeah, yeah. And no, you know what? By that. good measure, <laughs> MPV in their documentation yeah. is like, don't enable this by default, and to which I'll say, you need to change that in 2023. Like this should be, and it should be in VLC as well. Yeah. You know, I remember absolutely. enabling a VD APU, VDP? What is it? What was it called back in the day? Um, for NVIDIA. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh <laughs> VD, it's a, a, VDAP Appy. or VDPAU? Appy? Appy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Video Appy? <laughs> Video Appy. <laughs> VDPAU. Thank you, Katana Steel. Yeah. Uh, coming in. When that first got introduced into Mplayer, I remember, you know, like 2007, mm -hmm. 2008, somewhere in there. Oh, VDPA. VDPAU. VDPAU. Katana Steel's yeah. got it in the chat. He had it a minute ago. Yeah. Um, That's the offloading it was the first time we saw like real hardware acceleration under linux yeah and it was a big deal because we had single core pcs that most of them couldn't run 720p video much less 1080 1080 was like some weird moon number like it's gonna be a while before we get to that fortunately things have progressed mm -hmm. but this is still worth investigating and getting set up and it will if you get nvidia i should point out like the um 
if you got, uh, what is it, uh, Nuvo, you want to use the Mesa VA drivers as well. But the amount of people using Nuvo open source video drivers on, plus using it as a desktop, probably pretty thin. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Go oh, play around with awesome, it. Awesome, Ben. Now, before we get out of here, I also want to remind everybody that when you're on Linux Gamecast this afternoon, and you're like, ah, uh, YouTube, why you not want to connect? And you're reading our guide. <laughs> what I want you to do is pass the sad square frowning and make them happy. Head over to our support tab. If you <laughs> like what we do, you want to keep what we do free, live, having a good time. Most importantly, honest. We got a bunch of different ways you can help out the show. Share the show. Tell your friends. Tell your cats. We got recurring donations. One time Amazon wish list. We got a merch store. Amazon storefront, and of course, our humble affiliate. Leave a comment if you get any questions. Um, we've got a bunch of bonus things you get if you can support us on Patreon. Access to our Discord. Uh, you can get that if you're a Twitch sub as well. We do game streaming on Tuesdays, Thursdays, yeah, and Trek Fridays. Mania. We do Trek Manias on Tuesdays and Fridays. You're welcome to come pop in for that. Jordan is going through um, Portal Reloaded with Empty when they mm -hmm. get a chance on Thursdays. And of course, we got the show, Linux Gamecast, on Saturdays, and the after shows, and come hop in, come play around with us, and all the other fun things involved. Access to our show notes. You get uncut versions of this. If you're listening to the uncut version of this on YouTube, and you're like, all right, it's not bad. I don't know how bad YouTube's going <laughs> to get with the ads and all that, but we make that available a week early for our patrons. Also, we, I put it in podcast format, so you can just add it to your Patreon uh, RSS reader. You get a custom feed so all of the early stuff comes out access to our pre-pre super shows and on saturday which is like an extra hour of content which there's hundreds of extra of hours of content if you like what we do all right jill oh. we did a good run a little bit yes, long we did but let's roll some credits okay. and get out of here and thanks Sounds again everybody good. for making this possible yeah we love you all Thank except for steve because he's not here to defend himself Yes, <laughs> true. <laughs> oh, thank you to all our viewers and our lovely patrons. We have our advisors, Omegas and Artharen. Our Artharen is in chat And thanks, right Katana now. Steel, for the 31-month resub. Yeah, Katana. Thank you, Katana. And Basil did a resub, too. So that was cool. And thank you to... Oh, boy. Veritanuda, Justin, Frostclaw, Dirty Dean... Turnover, Ogi Wan, and Fox Dog. <laughs> I'm working names. on a way, a new technology to get that cheerling screen bigger, but there's so many of you. There's so Keep many. Keep being awesome. 383 episodes <laughs> in. Just getting started, everybody. We'll see you next week. Aw. Love you all. Make your happy faces, people. <laughs> I'll just put you upside down. Aw. That was so much fun. Thank you, Katana, for putting a VDPAU in. I was, it was on the tip of my, oh, look at Vin. What? <laughs> he, put, <laughs> he put me backwards. <laughs> <laughs>